the steps that I took to really quite deeply change my relationship with alcohol. And I'm hoping that by sharing this with you, these steps are also going to work for you. So this is, uh, yeah, I've, I've found it a very interesting journey over the last couple of months. And that might seem like a short period of time, but however, I can really tell that things have profoundly changed. So with that in mind, how I totally changed, how I am with alcohol and how you can too. And I was starting to feel that I had a bit of a problem with alcohol that could have become a bit more of a problem if I'd left it unchecked. So I, I know there's probably a lot of other people who feel this way and so I thought this would be useful to share. probably like me uh, these people don't really want to have a life where they are unable to drink at any time so not being a so it's not about absolute abstinence and giving up on having a drink at any time however it's about creating a more conscious and aware relationship and seeing whether that's possible and i'm happy to report that certainly for me that has been very very possible so i'm sam leffendorf if you don't know me uh, i think most people do but yeah i help people to overcome anxiety and self-defeating behaviors by building up their self-esteem, their confidence, and also the discipline, which can just support them to start really building a thriving, happy, and healthy life that they truly love. And if you are ready to resolve any self-defeating behaviors in your life, you know, for example, you know, alcohol and anything that that's doing to uh, kind of ruin your life at the moment, but also any other uh, difficult habits that you might have, then you can book a free strategy call with me to discuss a good way forwards. And there's going to be a link down below and you will uh, be able to book a call with me. So of course, I am talking about booze in particular in this video, uh, but these these strategies that I'm going to talk about today, you can apply to any self-defeating habits that you have in your life. So alcohol in particular is a particularly interesting one. And I guess like any of the deemed addictions, that there are you know, many of the organizations which have done you know, some fantastic work in supporting people to really in many cases save their lives from things like alcohol they say that, but their view is that you have to give up forever that if you are, have become a heavy drinker or alcoholic or whatever you actually are a victim of that substance for the rest of your life you have to completely surrender and totally you know just release the chance that you can ever enjoy a drink again and that's okay you know that they as i said they have saved many many lives so if people want to go down that route or people feel that they have to use that route then that's great but i thought it'd be interesting to explore what else could be possible and how things could maybe be even better can there be another way uh, can you go from being you know, like I was a heavy, uh, potentially starting to become a problem drinker to becoming a light and occasional enjoyer of alcohol without having the compulsion to then keep cracking on and continue and waking up full of regret and disappointment the next morning once you 
realise that you've been taken over by the compulsion again. So, yeah, how was I? So in my past, I was a very, very heavy drinker. And in particular, in my 20s and 30s, uh, especially when I was working in the financial services industry, uh, alcohol was a big problem for me, uh, especially in the last years. I was really using it to... I guess mask the problems of my life that I was doing something that was really out of line with who I was and the way that I wanted to live the way that I wanted to be so um <laughs> phone's just gone on but naturally never mind so yeah so when I actually left the financial services industry I was um, and I became a holistic practitioner, I found that I was able to reduce my drinking and it could reduce considerably. I no longer had, like, I guess, the pain to uh, mask that I had had that I was using alcohol as a crutch for in my very out of whack, out of line with who I was life. Uh, so, but I did still have, you know, still very much had a habit and I was still drinking fairly regularly and perhaps very heavily sometimes and I was reluctant to face it because there was also a lot of enjoyment in it and so things did reduce now however now I spend a lot of time in living in Spain I spend a lot of my time in Spain and it's it's very easy it's become very very easy to for casual drinking to tip over the edge here it's you know there's as a culture where people are you know 12 o'clock people have a a small drink and a bit of tapas at about before even before they're having their lunch just a small beer or uh something like that so and it comes with tapas of course so there's oh nice bit of free food so it and alcohol is incredibly low cost here so the whole cost argument goes out the window so gradually you know drinking was creeping more and more into my life to the point that i guess most days i was having a drink you know and i would you know, sort of congratulate myself for the very very odd day or it's even a few days off now and then uh but you know even those days were a trial you know they weren't easy it wasn't easy to just not have any alcohol I was be thinking about it and like, oh am i going to have a beer or not and there were then there was yeah you know, this was interspersed with you know fairly fairly heavy drinking uh, at weekends and or even during the week sometimes uh, in the evenings so the point that it was definitely starting to affect me started to affect uh, I don't when, you know it's not like um, having any massive negative effects on relationships but just it was just flattening things out a bit so they weren't um so they so yeah things weren't as good as they could be basically so i was realizing that it was a problem yeah you know, i was finding that you know i was slow to get going in the mornings uh, a lot of procrastination sluggish mind uh so you know things like i couldn't um yeah i i just always made sure that i wasn't doing anything before about 11 o'clock which of course is you know that's a lot of time already gone so i guess the biggest issue i had was that it was reducing the amount of time that i had to actually do meaningful and enjoyable things in my life so yeah so i guess in december i was really noticing this of course it's a it's a drinky time so on the 28th of uh, december i stopped and I totally stopped drinking uh, for a few days. Now, New Year's Eve, I did have a, a very nice bottle of wine, but I'd already made the decision that after that, uh, I was going to have a clean break from alcohol, certainly for 
a month or so. And so that's what I did. And this was a, an incredibly interesting time because during this time, I was really able to explore the relationship that I had had with alcohol and the different kinds of grip and the different ways that I was using it. And what I noticed is that it had, I can't say it had, I, so I had associated drinking even different types of alcohol with different situations and different things that were going on. So yeah, just as an example, a beautiful sunset, time for a nice gin and tonic. Uh, a yeah dinner well that's a bottle of wine lunch cheeky couple of beers if especially if i was out in town or something like that or just one beer not going to be any problem to have just that one little beer um achieved something celebration time you know you've got to have a, after your nice after a hard day work you deserve it you've got to have that nice beer it's just yes i'm celebrating here uh then uh watching a movie well that's wine time isn't it you've got to have that um glass of wine to relax you've got to you know you need wine to enjoy the movie and be able to really drift off and get into the uh enjoyment of it all so really you know all these i'm not calling them excuses they weren't excuses but they were associations where in my mind the whatever the situation was it just belonged with some form of drink and you know those drinks were interchangeable i guess based on what i had in the fridge or in the cupboard at the time but there would be real like perceptions that this drink belongs with that this is an occasion that merits a drink even if that's something that happens every single day such as a sunset or something like that um and yeah needing feeling like you're not really relaxed without it perhaps the sleep wouldn't be as good or so on and the trouble is with all of these patterns is you know it always just starts as one or this it was always starting as one drink with me perhaps saying oh yeah i'll have a couple and three or four would be very easy to go through um you know three small beers again individually as a day not really a problem but if when that's happening over and over again interspersed with some heavy drinking then that does become a problem so through uh, through seeing these associations now you can call these anchors because it's when you have made a psychological association with between one thing and another thing and they really are the they, these these are how patterns are created and when you actually see these patterns in your life, then it's absolutely brilliant because you can then use them to explore everything that's been going on for you. So I, of course, you know, you may know that I am an EFT tapping practitioner, part of the holistic practices that I use. So EFT, just very, very quickly, and it's absolutely most basic. It's a process of tapping on acupuncture points while focusing on a psychological and emotional situation in your life and uh, then breaking, effectively breaking the pattern by releasing the emotional attachment to whatever is going on. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's simply what it does. It enables you to break patterns by bringing them out of the darkness into your consciousness so that you can change them. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, along with that, I use a process called Matrix, Reimprinting, which is a guided visualization process where you use the tapping to actually jump on the emotional charge of situations in your life to find root cause events from your past and themes and patterns from your past which have led to the behavior pattern now. And you then work with your inner child or your younger self to actually release from that. So, yeah, really great. Um, techniques that I had to be able to explore this with myself and what I found was very very interesting and you know I guess we've got this people often think that drinking is about masking a problem in your life and I would thought this for a long time as well however it might well have been that way when I was working in the financial services industry and was miserable with what I was doing 
for the greater part of my working week, but it wasn't the case now. And what I actually found was that it was not a uh, negative situation that I was trying to mask. I was actually, all of these associations were actually taking me back to positive times. And specifically, these were strong, positive, peak experiences from my early teens right the way through to my 20s that kept enhancing and strengthening each other that I was trying to recreate subconsciously. So a part of my life that was reflected in drinking was trying to recreate these peak experiences of when, you know, I'd been on amazing holidays, uh, been really, really free, felt really happy. Uh, places like, you know, going to uh, Greek island hopping for months and uh, traveling in India and on the beach in Goa and places like that where you have the beautiful sunsets, be surrounded by lovely people, all your new friends and everyone was very friendly uh, until it until the situation might perhaps become ugly at some time. But generally, it was a very friendly, very free, very happy Sort of peak experiences of freedom that I felt when I had been in these spaces and every time there was alcohol involved so there was this association with alcohol and freedom and being able to live this sort of free carefree happy life that I wanted and that's what my subconscious mind was trying to recreate through all of these associations that I had but I realized through the tapping and over this over the month that I didn't really have anything to drink that I could still enjoy these moments and tune in to these same feelings of freedom um, association uh, togetherness uh, just all, all of the good feelings actually the drink yeah, while it might in some cases have enhanced those times, actually it wasn't necessary for me to be able to experience those things. You could, I could still enjoy the beautiful sunset and sitting out in the warmth. I could still enjoy a movie. I didn't, I didn't need the wine to chill me out so that I could relax. I could just relax and enjoy it. And uh, yeah, didn't need, to, I could just feel great that I'd achieved something I didn't need a drink to celebrate and so this became very powerful that I was able to actually yeah release myself from this now there was another thing that I found really really helped me during this uh during this time as well to break the pattern and this was a process that actually encourages conscious aware behaviors in your life so that you're just making these little light changes in your life which again day by day they don't necessarily mean much but when you compound them and they all um they, they add up over time these one percent changes in your life can add up to tremendous shifts over a period of time and this is a this is a framework that i think is amazing for anyone who's trying to change their behavior whether it's with alcohol or anything else it's called the six pillars of self-esteem so what are these so i've mentioned these in another, another video i'll just go through them very briefly and you can see how they apply to changing a, a self-defeating habit such as excessive drinking so the first one is um is self-conscious behavior so becoming so living consciously effectively and this means actually rather than going into escapism and trying to avoid uncomfortable situations and the reality of life you actually go into it so you if there's something that needs to be resolved you don't try and avoid it you move towards it and do whatever you can to actually create that shift so that was um that's so living consciously Self-acceptance is the second one. So actually fully owning yourself and accepting who you are, um, being your friend, 
not your enemy, but not also not giving yourself excuses and not saying things like, oh yeah, well I did that, but that really wasn't how I normally am. It's so actually owning a hundred percent all of your behavior, all of who you are, so that you can then use that to um as a the acceptance is the foundation of any transformation that you want. So accepting the reality of where you are gives you a strong platform to move forwards. So the next one is self responsibility. So taking um, full responsibility for your own happiness. And this means that no one owes you anything. You are actually 100% responsible for creating your own fulfillment in life and really taking charge of your life. And this, you know, uh, uh, you know, these are all interlinked. They're all very, very powerful. Um, next one is self-assertiveness. So standing up for who you are, what you believe, um, actually not being a wallpower, not be, not a wolf, wallpower, wallflower, not being, uh, not just accepting whatever people say to you. And you know, this is of course, you know, when there's when there can be great social pressures to actually have a drink, uh, this you know actually being they to go no i'm not having one but i'm quite happy to be here i don't need to have a drink to take part and enjoy this or whatever it is it's actually asserting what you want rather than bowing to the peer pressure of whatever's going on around you so yeah so that's so those are really valuable uh, um living with purpose so actually making decisions based on what you want in your life rather than again just being passive and uh, making decisions based on society, based on your conditioning, whatever, actually getting clear on your values, what you desire, creating inspiring objectives from that, and then moving forward towards those. So uh, that's good. And this one, number six, actually incredibly valuable for transforming your behaviors is being, uh, is having integrity with yourself. So what does integrity with yourself mean it means that you are true to yourself it means that when somebody else it means that basically when there's no one else around and you are on your own how do you behave then so it's about the behaviors that you it's about what you do when there's no one else there to actually like tell you what you have to do or for you to prove yourself to so this is really how you build self-esteem and it's how you really can change these self-defeating behaviors. And I think that that one of actually the integrity to yourself is probably the most important one because it, you know, it really reminded me every time. Now I've got these, I've got these six pillars sort of etched into my brain that this is how I live now. And, you know, if I am, if I do start engaging in a procrastinating behavior or something like that, or, you know, it, now I'm, I don't really have the compulsion to drink now, which is really, really interesting, but after quite a short period of time, but you know, if I did, or in the times that I did, you know, these, the self, the, the, yeah, the integrity to myself was what really kept me on a good path, coupled with tapping EFT, matrix imprinting to explore any feelings that were coming up to um yeah which were to actually which might cause me to go for an automated behavior okay so so yeah so really that is those six pillars along with an emotional processing technique uh, in which case i'm using eft tapping uh to really you can you can then identify all of the triggers and release yourself from them and it's incredibly valuable and powerful now in terms of other benefits that i've had now it's meant that i've had more time so i've been doing things like i've been exercising more and that's been great i've been actually doing um yeah that that's been making a conscious good decision uh I feel like my time connecting with my uh, everyone in my family uh, has been better uh been doing yeah more fun 
and interesting things with the family. So that's been great. Uh, I am actually am a peer. I haven't weighed myself, but I appear to be losing weight or at least belly, the belly. So good to see, good to see that shrinking away a little bit. Uh, I have more energy in the mornings and also a clearer head. So I'm not experiencing brain fog like I used to. It's easier for me to get going. And, you know, this is very, very useful, of course. It means that you get at ultimately getting more done, getting and, see, and seeing perhaps where there are still things that I do need to address, things to change, um, which I can't blame on alcohol anymore. Um, I have to still look at why uh, other reasons why I might be procrastinating or not doing things. So, yeah, there's loads and loads of benefits to this. And, yeah, have I had a drink? Yes, I have had a few drinks. And that was never my intention not to. Uh, I thought after a month, I went and I had a glass of wine with my lunch and it was great. Uh, that was it. I didn't have to have anything else. Uh, I've had... I've had a uh, lunch with some friends where I had uh, three beers during that time, I think, and that would normally have been the cue for me to continue and crack on, but I didn't have the compulsion to have to do that anymore. So that really worked. Uh, I was able to just relax and enjoy. I didn't then have the, whatever, the feeling like a, a pressure to push me forwards to, to keep drinking. Uh, I, uh, yeah, we've, I've had a bottle of wine at home a couple of times, uh, but we're not drunk the whole bottle. So that would have been absolutely unheard of before for us not to finish the bottle. Um, imagine if you can getting the cork, putting it back in the bottle and putting it away for another day. Now that would have been absolutely impossible for me not that long ago, but now it's no problem at all have a small glass put it away and open the bottle again the uh, another day even had the horrible experience of a bottle of wine going off in the fridge which again that just would never have happened uh yeah even a few months ago so okay so if you want to see whether this will work for you i'm just going to highlight the process again now i think that you know you may not have to stop forever but i think you really do have to stop for a while at least a few weeks you know so aim for a good month it could be even longer uh where you can actually start to really notice the triggers all of the compulsions that you have and then write all of these down and start seeing if you can notice the reasons why those are there so the root cause of why those are there um, whether you're blocking pain, whether it is about sleep for you, whether you are trying to, yeah, whatever it is, whether you're trying to, like I want um, positive peak experiences from your past, whatever it is that is, um, yeah, this is the, uh, during this time, you notice all of those, all of those things that you're associating alcohol with all of the anchors which hold the behavior in place. And then you can, you know, you can apply tapping, you can apply um, any other emotional processing technique to support, to release that. Now, you know, this might probably, yeah, this might be tough, a part of this, it could be tough. Uh, you, if, if, you're, if you're hiding problems, then you might have to own up and face up to those because the, otherwise it's either you it's either do that and feel better about them or have a drink to resolve the anxiety that they're causing you to feel. So again, whatever emotional processing technique you've got to give you the ability to face up to that is going to be great. Um, if you realise, like I did, that a lot of your life has been about trying to recreate these past peak experiences, then then you can use, and that's also great too, because you can realise how you can move forwards into ways that feel as you feel then, but without having to have these challenging associations, the association with a substance to make it happen you can realize that these these states of being are available to you without the without the drink or whatever it is 
but you, so you have to deal with it, but you can do it. it. And then after that, then you can make the choice whether it's something that you actually want to continue with in your life. Or perhaps you might think, actually, you know, I don't even want to bother going forwards with that anymore. So it depends on whether your um, whether for you it's you know whether it's whether you value what alcohol occasionally and non compulsively brings to your life. Now, one thing I noticed, I think this is important to say, is that my in the certainly in the first couple of weeks, my sweet treats. Uh, intake went up quite considerably so that showed me that part of what was going on was a a a compulsion towards sugar which of course there's a lot of sugar in alcohol so just be prepared that you might want to have some snacks some chocolate whatever sweets and don't give yourself hard time because this is all a process you can deal with that as well and on that note i think you know what happens if you do if you do have a drink during this time, what happens if you if you've set yourself and said, right, I'm going to have a month off, and then halfway through you find that you've before you really know it, or even constantly you just go, oh, fuck it, I'm going to have a I'm going to have a drink, and then you feel bad afterwards. Why feel bad? There's absolutely no reason to feel bad about anything like that. You know, it's very different if you've gone from from having. Uh, lots and lots of drinks regularly to just having one drink over a period of time, then, you know, actually that's massive, massive improvement. And that's the same if you're trying to give up smoking, where it is, um, where, you know, you might, if someone has one cigarette, you've not failed to give up smoking. You have gone such a long way towards that. And this is the absolutism that I think so many people live by which can cause a lot of problems. Uh, just it's celebrate, celebrate how well you've done, rather than what has, um, rather than the one little thing where you slipped up a bit. And you know, it might be that you, you, you can then just enjoy that and just say, okay, that was all right. Let's say there was a wedding that you were going to or something and you know, it's gonna be a fun time and you want to have that experience and it's in the middle of the time that you wanna to, want to try this process. Don't give up. Don't put this off. You don't have to put this off until after some time. You can. But, you know, it's these just because there's a bit of a something happening in that time. You don't have to be absolute, absolute around this. Now, one thing I think is actually quite important to mention here is that if, you know, I, you know, I was I guess I was a binge drinker, a heavy drinker, but I'm not an alcoholic to the point I was physically dependent on alcohol if you're in that situation uh it's not um ecological it's not sound for your body to stop at that point so you might um yeah you you might if you you might have to do some sort of detox program um which i can't really give you advice on but that could be something that you might need some medical support with to actually wean yourself off so your body's not getting the massive shock of totally giving up alcohol so yeah so i hope that that has been useful giving you an insight into how i did this now some people might say that yes a couple of months so what that's not a long time not even that but i can i know that this has changed i can really really I know internally, I know how I feel, I know that the compulsions have gone. And I think that, you know, I think that this is definitely a a change for me. And, you know, it might, for some people, that might not be long enough to know. Uh, Perhaps things might change, who knows. But, yeah, if I, you know, I encourage you, if you want to try this, to give it a go. And if you want, any help with it then you're very welcome to message me i'll put a link down below so that you can book a free uh discovery call with me that you can use uh we can use it as a strategy session to work out how you can change whatever habits are 
um, holding you back and preventing you from transforming your life in a positive way. Bye for now.